Well, happy Father's Day, everybody. It's great to see all of you this morning. And, uh, amen, hadn't seen you in a while, so praise God you're here. So, um, as we look at Father's Day, this is always a, a difficult sermon to preach because it's um, everybody has a different experience with their dad. Um, some people had great dads, some people had awesome dads, uh, some people had dads that were around, but, you know, they, they, were, they were just okay. Uh, some people had dad that were just mean, and a lot of people had dads that simply weren't around. And yet the Bible tells us uh, in Exodus, as, as uh, Moses went up and met with God, came down with a tablet of the Ten Commandments. Okay, so these aren't the Ten Suggestions. These come straight from the hand of God, written with his finger on a stone tablet. So this is not optional. This is what we have to do. And if you read the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, telling us, you know, the things that we, we shouldn't do. And then we get to uh, verse 12, and it says, Honor your father and mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. It is a commandment for us to honor our parents, especially our fathers. And so in this country since 1922, the third Sunday of June has been Father's Day. And, uh, you know, like, like every other uh, big holiday, it's, it's a commercial thing, you know, where you can get the cards and, and it's all about going out to eat and gifts and, and all that kind of thing. But it's supposed to be a, to pay tribute to our fathers. So God commands us to honor our fathers. As a country, we honor our fathers. Why should we do that? What is the point of all of this? Well, in the verb form, <coughs> father means the founder, the foundation, to author, to create. It is, it is not just someone who is, but it's an action. For us to exist, there had to have been a father who participated with a mother so that we could come to exist. Even if that was the only thing they ever did, they did that. They fathered us. So one of the things that as fathers we need to be aware of is that as fathers we are the authors of our home. We get to create what our home looks like. We get to uh, put shape to form what our children are going to look like. Now, as I very well know, there's no guarantee that your kids are going to take that path and go with it. Some of them do, some of them don't, you know. But you have to do your job, and that is to father, to author, to create in your home. And so you are the fathers, you are the authors of, of your home, for those of you that are, that are Christian men, Christian fathers. And that is, 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 it's a creative thing. I mean, mothers get to create because the, the child is formed in their womb, right? And, and it's, you know, flesh of their flesh, blood of their blood. It's, 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 they create physically. But fathers are to, called to create spiritually. And so it is our job to author our homes. Psalm 78, verses 5 through 7 says, for he, for he, God, established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should be, uh, make known to their children that the generation to come might know them, the children who would be born, that they may raise and declare them to their children, that they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. 
Fathers are the conduit through which God communicates to his children. God, father, God ordained fathers specifically. And realize that we're in a different society than, than the Jews had right, you know, back then. That was a very paternalistic society. Um, did you know that that's changed in Jewish society? It's not a paternalistic society anymore. For you to be considered Jew, it's not your dad who has to be Jewish. It's your mom who has to be Jewish. If you have a, a, a Jewish dad and a, and, and a Gentile mother, you're not considered Jewish. But if you have a, gen, uh, a Gentile dad and a Jewish mother, you are considered. So, so things have just kind of flip-flopped. But the Bible is a very paternalistic society. And we all know that God is genderless. We know that, that he's not a man, he's not a woman, he's, he's genderless. But the way that he chose to communicate and talk to us was he created us, first of all, in his image, and then he chose to take on the role of a father and pass on that role to fathers. And so he's given the law, and it's up to us, those who believe in Christ, to pass on that law, to pass on that wisdom, to pass on the word of God to our children. That they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. It is up to us to impart that. The Apostle Paul in the New Testament quotes the commandment. So in Ephesians 6, 4, he says, Fathers, uh, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the law. So in addition to what says, honor your fathers and mothers, it says, fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the law. What, what does it mean to instruct? What does it mean to train? In instruction... You're a teacher. You're passing on information. You're passing on uh, the, 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 the Bible. You're passing on your knowledge of the Word. But that is just more uh, an instruction. That's, that's passing on knowledge. Training goes a step beyond that. In training, uh, you are teaching the, a person a particular skill or type of behavior. So... You know, I, I love this graphic of this, this father and son, you know, they're working on the gym and the dad's teaching them how to, use, how to use the weights and all that. Not only is he teaching, imparting the knowledge of it, giving out information on how to do it, but then he stays there and he watches while his son does it. And then he says, okay, you need to, that, that's good, but... You need, this is the correct form for doing it, right? And so he coaches them through it. Yeah, that's, that's what you need to do. Now do 10 of them. And, and he does six or seven. He says, oh, Dad, I can't do anymore. No, you can do it. You can do it. Come on, let's do it. You know, it's seven, eight, nine. Oh, I can't do it. And, and Dad just kind of helps him with, with, with his hand, you know. And, and that training helps us to go beyond what we think that we can do. It encourages us. It pushes us. It lets us know that we can accomplish more than what we think we can accomplish. So in teaching, you impart knowledge. In training, you become a cheerleader for your kids. You become the one that comes along with them and, and motivates them and pushes them. So that's, that's really important. Sadly, in our world today, fathers are an afterthought. Um, you hear the term baby daddy, you know, to mean somebody that, that just was a sperm donor, that provided, you know, the sperm for the baby to be born, and then after that is not a part of, of, of the life of the child. Um, in this country, we make laws that make it better for people 
not to get married because if, if they're receiving any kind of assistance, they receive more assistance if they're not married. And so it keeps fathers out of the picture. Now in this women's movement, it's encouraged that they're not be fathers. Oh, you can do it all yourself. Just, just, they don't need a father. You, just You do it by yourself. That's, that's better than having a father around. That is not the way that God set things up. God set things up for a child to have a father and a mother, for there to be both, because both impart different things. I spent years studying child development, and you know that a child in their younger years are going to gravitate to, towards mommy. They're going to be around mommy's feet and, and you know, pulling on her skirt, and, and they gravitate toward, towards mommy. But at a certain point, they start gravitating towards daddy. You know, as they start hitting those pu puberty years and all that, they, they need that father to be there, and they start gravitating towards that. The Bible has a place of honor for them. And we need to understand that this is what he has ordained. Now, what society dictates, because society changes every 10 years. You know, what is good today is bad tomorrow. What is bad today is good tomorrow. Watch any TV show. You know, watch any TV show that is in uh, a rebirth. You know, there used to be a series back when. And now that they're redoing it, they're changing it completely. And so this world just sees things in a skewed way. The only thing that stays steady, the only thing that doesn't change is the Word of God. The Word of God does not change, and He says, honor your fathers. There need to be mothers and fathers in a child's life. All fathers pass on something to their children. I can remember a few years back when uh, Tebow was, was, uh, Tim Tebow was, was playing professional football and uh, he was you know, talking to some of his teammates about being role models. And one of his teammates says, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a football player. I'm not a role model. You know, all I do is play football. I don't want people you know, out there looking at my life and all that. I'm not a role model. And Tim Tebow had this answer to them. Everybody that's a football player, everybody that's in the public eye is a role model. The only question is, are you a good role model or a bad role model? As fathers, you are role models. I can remember years ago after we uh, uh, adopted Aaron and Amanda, um, I we had moved to, to Clearwater, but I was still working in Tampa. And, uh, you know, I worked a long day at, at Metropolitan Ministries. And then I had to, you know, take that traffic on the causeway. And back then I had a, a, a stick shift. And uh, by the time that I got home, man, I was spent. And so I, I would get on the couch and turn on and watch TV for a little while. Until... I watched the two of them, Aaron and Amanda, playing house one day. And my daughter was running around doing different things, and my son laid on the couch with the remote. Wow. That really made me take a long, hard look at how my kids saw me. You know, and... and knew that I needed to make some changes, that I needed to make, be a different kind of role model to my kids. Whether it's good or bad, kids are watching. They're going to learn from you. So we pass on a heritage. There's a heritage that comes from a father, whether it be it good or bad. But it is up to us as children Again, right, I've been focusing on fathers. Now I'm going to shift, and I'm going to focus on children. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 says, Test everything. 
hold on to the good. Even the best fathers weren't perfect. You know, parents are what keeps, you know, psychologists in business. Because so many of us have needed therapy, you know, to get over what happened with our fathers. My father, in particular, was um, distant. He was very strict. He was an absentee father. Um, for a couple of years after he moved to Puerto Rico, um, he wasn't there because he was still working in the States to, in order to send us money uh, to Puerto Rico. Then when he moved to Puerto Rico, he became a pastor. And he was one of the old-time pastors that it was all about the church. And if there was any time left over, then there was time for the family. But he was almost never home. And he, when he was home, he was the disciplinarian. And uh, he just seemed very distant to me. I mean, it was my mom who taught me how to, how to throw a baseball. You know, my father was just never involved with me. And uh, very judgmental and very critical and all that. It wasn't until years later, I mean, years and years later, that um, I had to go into counseling because I was having nightmares about my dad. Because anytime anything was slightly less than perfect, I would have these nightmares of my father being there, just, you know, just criticizing me and putting me down and telling me that I'd never amount to anything. And see, I knew you that wouldn't work, that wouldn't fit, and all that kind of thing. And uh, so I went into counseling and uh, started uh, asking my mother some questions about my dad and all that kind of thing. By the way, um, if you're dealing with uh, any issues with your dad, this is a great book, uh, Father Memories by Dr. Kevin uh, Lehman, um, How to Discover the Unique, Powerful, and Lasting Impact Your Father Has Had on Your Adult Life and Relationships. So it's a great book if you're, if you're struggling at all with, with those kind of things. Well, I've discovered that my dad didn't know how to be a father. Because when he was in sixth grade, his father died. And he had to quit school to start working, selling things on the street and door to door to help support his family. So he was pretty much self-taught. Now, my father was, was a brilliant man, a very intelligent man that at one point in his life had hoped to be a doctor. Uh, but obviously he had to quit school at the age of six Fortunately, he was uh, a very avid reader, and he taught himself a lot of things. And ultimately, um, when my parents moved to Chicago, he went to Moody Bible Institute. And Moody Bible Institute, um, of course, he didn't have you know, a high school degree. He didn't have any, educa any formal education. They had to test him to see what he knew and what he could do. And they found out that he had taught himself a lot. And so they accepted him. And my father graduated from Moody Bible Institute. So he never had a father to teach him. The other thing that I discovered was that my father was not the person that I thought he was. I grew up as an only child, thinking that I was an only child, only dis to discover around 10 or 11 that I was not an only child when one day there was a knock at the front door and this man is asking for my father. And I said, well, who can I say is, is, is asking for him? And he said, your brother. And... Uh, I found out that not only did I have one brother, I had three older brothers, and each one of them was from a different mother. And that was a rude awakening. And so what I came to see is, is by the time that I was born, my dad was 47. He'd already raised three sons. He just wasn't that interested in raising another one. Um, I've told the story before, before he passed, um, went to the hospital with my mom. He had a moment of lucidity, and my father asked forgiveness from both my mom and I for the way that he treated us, and for the first and only time in my life, he said that he loved me and he was proud of me. I got that gift. 
But still, I, I dealt with nightmares and I dealt with other things because he was not a great dad. But I had to then look back and look at all the things that my dad had imparted on me because my father had brought me up in the church. My father had been my pastor. My, I, I had sat under my uh, father's teaching for years. Um, my father uh, would have theological discussions with me um, and, and, and give me some of his theological books to read and all that kind of thing. So there, there was a heritage there that I just didn't appreciate it because I just saw him in this negative light. So test everything and hold on to the good, even if the only good that you can see at this point is that he fathered you. All of us, to some extent, carry some baggage from our fathers. It's time to let go of some of that baggage. It's time to come to Christ and say, okay, maybe my dad wasn't the greatest dad, uh, or maybe he did this or he did that. Give those to the Lord and forgive your dads. Just, just forgive them. Just unload that so that you don't spend your life carrying that stuff with you. Now, some of you, praise God, have had great, great dads. But nobody's had a perfect dad. I'm sure some dad has some, some, done something to, to, to make you mad. You know, I've done it with my kids. My kids have had times where they just didn't like me very much. You know, it's just, it just, it's life. We're not perfect. We're not perfect. But let go of some of the baggage. Test and keep that which is good. To honor. What does it mean to honor? To honor is to regard, regard with great respect, to esteem as having come before you. He came before you. you no matter how flawed your father, he came before you. He made you possible. That is worthy of honor. That is worthy of respect. It is an homage to someone who has had influence in your life or has paved the way for what you have accomplished. Well, my dad was, 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 was a horrible dad and, and he treated me, you know, really bad. It's funny, but I've, a lot of the people that I've met that have those stories, they have turned out the way that they have because they promised themselves that they would never be like that. That to do it right, they would do the opposite of what their dad did. There was still an influence. Maybe it was negative and you had to turn it around into a positive, but it was still an influence. So treat your dad with respect. Teach your dads with respect. Honor them. And not just because, well, Ephesians 6, 1 through 3 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. All the other commandments are thou shalt not. All the other commandments is you better watch out for the wrath of God if you do this. This is the one commandment that comes with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. That you might be blessed. That God would go with you because you honor your father. On the other side of that coin is Deuteronomy 27, 16. Cursed is the man who dishonors his father and mother. Bible addresses it both ways. You have a choice. You can honor your father or you can dishonor your father. If you honor your father, you're bringing blessings on yourself. You are making your life easier. You are making God honor you by you honoring your father. 
You're going to have the kind of life that God wants for you because he's saying, well, if, if he doesn't honor his earthly father, how is he going to honor me? On the other side of that equation is if you dishonor your father, you're cursed in the eyes of God. And this is not optional. This is the word of God. We all have a choice to make. Fathers, will you instruct and train up your children in the way of the Lord and give them a legacy of righteousness? Will you make deposits in your children? Will you go along them and train them up? Will you teach them to do things? I can remember uh, a while ago, Nathan was preaching, and he was talking about how um, uh, Luke was doing something that he didn't like, or he was trying to get Luke to something. I I can't remember the story exactly. You'll, you'll, You'll have to correct me afterwards. But instead of, you know, just, you know, because I said so, he decided to use Scripture to answer Luke and to instruct Luke. And Luke responded to it because it, was just, it wasn't just Dad saying, got to do this, you got to do this. He said, this is what the Bible says. And so it just, it just changed things around, and Luke saw things in a different way. That's our job as fathers. Train up our kids. Be along with them. Push them. Encourage them. Be their cheerleader. Give them a legacy that when you're gone, that legacy will live on in your kids. So fathers, we have that choice to make, to instruct and to train. Children, will you honor your father by forgiving the wrongs done to you while holding on to the good and incorporating it into your lives? You have that choice to make. As children, we can choose to forgive and we can choose to honor. We all have a choice between becoming bitter or becoming better. Between being blessed or being cursed. On this Father's Day, those of you here that are fathers, God bless you and honor you. And, 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 and in knowing most of you and, and what you've already done in your children's lives, know this. This world, unfortunately, has a lot of influence on our children that we can't control. All we can do is make our deposits and then trust God for the rest. Some of our kids are going to latch on to that and they're going to grab onto what we've done and they're going to take it forward and carry it and, and just, just do it. Others are going to be swayed by this world and just go in a different direction for a while. We have to trust that the deposits we made that because of those deposits, that at some point God, through his Holy Spirit, will spark what we've deposited in them and that they will turn back to God. So be blessed, fathers. I honor you this morning for who you are and what you do. And I bless you. Let's bow our heads. Daddy God, it's such an honor to be able to to call you Daddy, to call you Father. Jesus taught this, Abba Father, Daddy God.
you made us in your image, and as fathers, we, we, we are to be obedient to you and, and do what you model to us through Christ. As children, we have to sift through our experiences, forgive those things that maybe hurt us or scarred us, and be thankful for any positive influence that we had from our fathers. Help us to honor them. I honor Jose Molina this morning, the father that you gave me. And because of his influence, I stand here at this pulpit today. May we all honor our fathers. In Jesus' name.